Let me tell you about Horse Rotivator. The mid 80s were in full swing and future industrial icons Coyle, namely Jean Balance and Peter Christofferson, were fresh off the wave of a fantastic debut by adding Steven Thrower to their roster permanently after he lended some great contributions to the aforementioned debut, Scatology. While a wonderful full step by the group that set their career off on a great foot, their world and the world around them had its own ongoing issue that inspired their sophomore outing in many ways that grounded it. It allowed their talents to evolve and flourish out in beautiful agony with an imaginative twist. It also ended up becoming one of the best albums of the 80s and a landmark in its lane in my opinion. The album in question is their second album, the 1986 classic. Horse Rotivator. Happy Pride Month! I know I'm not the most gay or queer YouTuber uh, in my own social circles for those that know me, but I would argue I'm also not the most aggressively straight, and I figured if I were going to do a video during Pride Month to talk about a classic that is very, very gay, I would talk about one of the best industrial albums ever made, Horse Rotivator. An album that acts as a good snapshot into the pain parts of the gay community had to have been feeling throughout the mid-80s amidst the AIDS crisis that not only struck the US and was a big deal over here, but was a big deal over in the UK. While Jean Balance has talked about having this sort of vision of these apocalyptic four horsemen also ravaging the land being a core inspiration for that, and that sort of darkness being even portrayed in retroactively the album cover which was the site of a bombing not so long after this album's release had gone down um those feelings of death do nothing but accent a lot of that feeling of anguish and pain wrought out from you know the aids epidemic and this album wastes no time setting that precedent by starting with the anal staircase a uh, song that introduces a lot of the foreboding, unnerving ideas with some of the synth tones and choices while keeping those industrial sounds also a core component of the sound. I like the percussion, I like the pseudo cacophony that builds throughout the groove of this song. And I think that it, if there's a song that sort of encapsulates gay love in, in that sort of way, Anal Staircase is a good starting point that I think acts as a good sort of not only thorough line through tracks like Penetralia, which sort of create a little more of an intimate and still abrasive leaning uh, twist uh, or sort of intimate focus on the definition of Penetralia, but also adds a little bit more of an unhingedness to it that permeates to other aspects that the album talks about in the relation of death with like Circles of Mania, this deviation that has this weird sample choice, their singer Jean's writing from the perspective of being amidst a gay orgy, which is sort of a, a sort of lyrical nod to Ostia, which is a track about the murder of Italian director Pier Paolo Pasolini, who directed Salo, 120 Days of Sodom, which that song in particular acts as a really good sort of inverse to a lot of these sonic ideas that I've talked about enjoying thus far as far as like the harsh abrasiveness or the madness that creeps throughout the parts of this record that is further explored on a handful of the instrumental cuts like on the lurching ravenous which has some interesting sample choices woven throughout there as well like elephants and doors closing or the closer which bookends the intensity from the anal staircase masterfully However, to pivot back to Ostia, I really enjoy the beauty of that song. I think that the acoustic guitars on that sound beautiful. A sound that I think is further fleshed out really well on the two covers on here. Which, I mean, given the sort of intensity that this album opens up on, I think that the break from Baby Lero through Harold is honestly a nice sort of good shift in pacing that I think the band again sort of harnesses and carries gracefully throughout an intense second portion from Penetralia onward. Who by Fire, which is a Leonard Cohen cover, which is a great choice for a cover, especially given a lot of the thematics of death that are the other side of the coin of this record's writing style. Blur is a moment that sort of marries those two worlds harmoniously. Another track that sort of 
melds these worlds together incredibly well is Blood from the Air. You know, the idea and imagery and the lyrics of walking this cemetery while the instrumental creates this buzzing unnervingness beneath John's vocals is a moment of perfection. And I think that the golden section, which is the penultimate track, also does so fantastically. You know, while Paul Vaughn, the BBC broadcaster, is reading these excerpts from this book of these grand heavenly figures, uh, it, it gives you this sense of ascension amidst a lot of the themes that have been explored thus far. And I think that on top of a lot of the density and aggression that I've talked about, the beauty that's here shines just as brightly. Really, as a whole, a lot of the pacing of this record is just immaculately done. It gives this sort of ebb and flow experience that I would say mirrors the likes of like a modern classic like Sinner Get Ready by Lingua Ignota. In fact, a lot of the writing style on this sort of gives me the same feeling that a lot of Kristen Hader's stuff does do as far as being this emotionally resonant piece. I really enjoy Horse Rotovator, and, and it's one of those records that I don't spin often, but... I've been spinning loosely for the last like 10 years and still think that it just is a feat of music. You know, as far as blending these industrial and gorgeous sounds with these heavy themes within the writing and just finding a way to, to make your message stand firmly, I think it's done masterfully. And I think that if we're talking about records that amplify that voice of concern during this during that era horse rotivator is a great example of that and it's an album that is very much championed by and large while it's not one that's as easy to access because of the label that it was put on to those that know they know horse rotivator is a foundational record you can hear a lot of ideas on here that still feel like they are being pulled upon by artists today, you know, artists that really look at the power of amplifying a voice like this or harnessing these experimental ideas and, and sort of contemporizing them a bit. You can still see in roots on a record like this, and I think that it's absolutely a smash, it's absolutely a classic, and it's one that, again, as time has gone on, is looked at with nothing but adoration. I wish I could find a copy of it. I'll be honest, since it's not on streaming, I've literally just been streaming YouTube rips of it for the last 10 years every time I decide to throw it on. But it's a classic, and it's one that if you're gonna be a fan of like industrial and industrial adjacent music, you owe it to yourself to spin. I will say, I know I've been throwing around sort of the importance of it to the industrial scene, uh, and obviously when hearing parts of this record, that'll seem very evident, but I will say this isn't like your grandma's industrial. This isn't like a Nine Inch Nails style industrial project. It's got some weird experimental ideas, but I think that they all are done so incredibly well and do so to service uh, the overall feeling that the record permeates along with accenting it in some choice moments, you know? As a fan of experimental music dissected from the industrial sort of banner, uh, that, that looks better, I look less washed out, it still has just a lot of emotional potency and great artistry within it that I think uh, is definitely makes it worthy of a classic or calling it a classic on top of its influence within pockets of the industrial scene. It's an interesting insight into a scene that really didn't need to be as big as it did but ended up becoming a genre that is still looked upon fondly. And again, it's super gay. Happy Pride Month, everybody. I'm sure to some it probably seemed weird for me to talk about this album, especially within the context of doing it for Pride Month, but especially given how it how swept under the rug it seems the AIDS epidemic in the UK had become to some degree given the research that I'd done for this video. I'm, at least Horse Rotivator gave a portrait of a reaction to it in tandem with amplifying the voices of those lives lost due to it. It was a really shitty thing that happened and a lot of negativity like was directed at the gay community for it and it sucks ass. Uh, and if anything, at least it does portray that in glorious splendor. I was happy to highlight a classic that I feel like should never be lost to time. Coil really 
knocked it out of the park with t turning their eyes into a more personal scope. And as far as transcending the sophomore slump, Coil knocked it out of the fucking ballpark. Happy Pride. If you're celebrating, be safe. If you like this review, give it a like. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. I drop two to four vids a week, depending on what I've got going on. Thank you so very much for watching. I'm going to go, though. I've been Viral Rack. You guys have good days, lives, and situations, and I'll see you another day. Also, if you're wondering if I've been balancing out that depression and bleak sounds from Horse Renovator with anything, I have with the bright sounds of the Cranberries debut, which almost also became a video this month and still might next month because it's an incredible classic that turns 30 this year and soundtracked my engagement weekend.